Hi everyone. Now today I'm taking a very small uh, topic uh, for discussion and uh, it is not uh, something that is very new or something. It's an old uh, entity but many times people do get confused with it. Even my own students initially used to get confused what is this. So uh, I thought I'll just take it up and uh, maybe the, it would benefit other people also. Now uh, the word says chorionic bump. Now what is this chorionic bump? The word bump itself is uh, giving you an indication that there is something which would be protruding or something which would be coming out and that is the reason we've called it bump. Now why is it called chorionic because again it is indicating probably it is coming somewhere from the chorionic surface. So it's an irregular convex bulge which comes out from the chorio-decidual surface and it protrudes into the gestational sac. Now usually you will see it in the first trimester. And it is not a common entity, but yes, people are coming across these days very often. Some people are attributing it to infertility treatments also, but nothing is very uh, sure about it, that what it is actually, what is actually causing it. And usually people believe that it is just a collection of blood or hematoma, or you can say in a rough way, it is a subchorionic bleed. Some people have also put in a hypothetication, hypothecation that this could be a vanishing twin. So the, there are different theories, but the most accepted one is that it is probably a hematoma. And the reason is that when you follow it up, it usually shows you the same changes like you see in bleed. No, what, what changes do we see in bleed? In bleed, we find that as we will follow up, if fresh bleed has not occurred, it will uh, just keep on resolving. And how do we judge resolution? By the change in the texture so it will become darker it will become cystic it will become more uh, anechoic gradually first heterogeneous then anechoic so the same changes we have noticed in the hematomas in this uh, chorionic bump and most of the time it will appear in the first trimester and then uh, after some time it disappears however we need to have a guarded prognosis for it. Why guarded prognosis? Because I'll show you the pictures also, the videos also, and you will notice many of them may be anembryonic pregnancies. And it has been found that it may be associated with some cases where we have seen that it may lead to missed abortion. So you have to have a little guarded prognosis. See, if you apply things, then you can say that because there is bleed, obviously there is a risk to the pregnancy. And if we take it as a hematoma, and on ultrasound, you may find variable appearance. Why variable appearance? Again, because it is a bleed. So it is going to have variable appearances on the depending on the stage you saw it. If it was a fresh one, you may see it as a bright area like you are seeing here. If it is uh, a later one, then it may be partially resolved. So you may see it as some solid cystic area or when further later, it may appear more anechoic. So different appearances may be seen on ultrasound. Now, what would be the role of Doppler? Whenever you will put color, this will not show you any color as such, right? And this I've already told you. Now, let us go and see how it appears. Now, this is the first video that I'm showing you. See here. Now, this is the uterus, the gestational sac area. You can even see the double decidual ring here. And you can see there's a bright area, which is, now this is the placenta. And from the chorio-decidual region, from the chorio-placental region, this area is coming out. This is thin amnion, you can see. This is looking very bright, right? So probably this is a fresh one. So this is chorionic bump. In some views, when you will see, it will appear as if it is not attached to the wall. But as I always tell that you should see the ultrasound picture in different views before commenting on it. So this is what you call as chorionic bump and as far as we know things about it we believe it to be a hematoma and some people might say this is a part of vanishing twin. Now this is another one, another picture, another video which is just showing you a little bit uh, artifacts are there because of electric disturbances but you can make out again the sac looks very in and this is the last one was also an embryonic and this is also an anembryonic pregnancy and what we notice here see here then there's an amniotic sheet also in between if you could see and again you see it like a bump and it has some cystic area so probably a little more in the resolu resolution stage compared to the previous and again we are putting color we just see the normal color flow that we see around the gestational sac this area does not show you flow. 
then this is again another one this one is with an embryo and you can see the embryo here you can see this is the sac and see here this is the big again big chorionic bump having brighter edges and in the center there is a cystic area again in the stage of resolution we cannot make out in this picture whether pulsations are present or not but in this case there were pulsations present and uh, it was a live fetus and then again you can make out that this is the amnion here and this is the chorionic bump so in some case some pictures it will look as if it is separate from the this is the yolk sac no so this is not part of the yolk sac yolk sac is separate and that was the bump again okay. you can see this is the bump most of it is already resolved so maybe this pregnancy carries on properly though there is a bleed here also so i am very doubtful about this one also whether it will go forward or not and the, then this one is the one just to show you it's a still picture where you can see the chorionic bump here now it seems as if it is not attached to the uh, to the wall just of the gestational sac but when you will rotate the picture you will find it will be attaching to the wall of the gestational sac this is the yolk sac and this is the embryo which is taking color which is telling you this is a live embryo so it is not uh, this thing that the chorionic bump is associated with only an embryonic pregnancies it is also associated with live pregnancies many of them will carry forward also normally but many of them may not carry forward so you have to have a guarded prognosis you have to be careful in these patients and do a follow up so i hope now the chorionic bump will not bump you and you will be able to diagnose it better that's it. Thank you so much.